एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू बायो स्कूल दिस इज योर एजुकेटेड गायत्री सो इन टूडे सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट टू इम्पोर्टेंट टर्म्स ऑफ इम्यूनोलॉजी दैट इज हैप्टेन एंड आर्जुभेंट सो फर्स्ट वी विल फोकस ऑन हैप्टेन देन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट आर्जुभेंट सो लेट्स बिगिन सो वट इज हैप्टेन हैप्टेन इज ए कॉम्पाउंड दैट बाय इट्स सेल्फ फेल टू इंड्यूस एन इम्यूनो रेस्पॉन्स वाई बाय इट सेल्फ इट इज ऑनएबल टू इंड्यूस एन इम्यूनो रेस्पॉन्स बिकॉज ऑफ इट्स लो मॉलिकुलर वेट एंड देयर केमिकल सिंप्लिसिटी वाई बिकॉज ऑफ देयर लो मॉलिकुलर वेट एज वेल एज केमिकल सिंप्लिसिटी ऑल्सो हैप्टेंस आर एंटीजेनिक ओके दो हैप्टेंस आर एंटीजेनिक बट they are not immunogenic so though the haptens are antigenic but haptens are not immunogenic by themselves they are unable to induce immune response so when haptens are able to induce immune response when the haptens when the haptens conjugated with carrier protein then that hapten carrier com- conjugate that will able to induce immune response so when haptens conjugated with carrier proteins then hapten carrier conjugate will get activated and then it becomes immunogenic this is really very simple first thing that haptens by itself they are not able to induce immune response why they are not able to induce immune response by themselves because because of their low molecular weight and chemical simplicity but when haptens conjugated with a high molecular weight compound that is called as carrier protein okay then that hapten and carrier conjugate they will activated they will get activated and they are immunogenic okay car land stainer discovered that when they have tens they conjugated with carrier protein then they becomes immunogenic so what he did for his experiment let's see these are haptens haptens when injected into an organism into an organism so for his experiment he took rabbit then no immune response okay no antibodies okay so when hapten injected into an organism that is rabbit then there no antibody formed in the second case what he did these are the carrier proteins and carrier proteins are high molecular weight right when the carrier proteins injected into the bit antibody produced but the antibodies are produced against two carrier proteins so in the third case what he did he conjugated haptens with carrier protein then the hapten carrier conjugate injected into rabbit then what he found here antibodies are produced against two haptens hapten is really a very simple just remember haptens by themselves they are not able to induce immune response so when they are able to induce immune response they are able to induce immune response when they are combined with a high molecular weight protein molecule that is called as the carrier protein at that time they are able to produce antibodies or they become immunogenic okay and this concept was developed by carl lenstainer in 20th century haptens by itself they are antigens but they are not immunogens hapten itself is an antigen but not immunogen okay so all immunogens are antigens but all antigens are not immunogens okay hope now you have a clear idea about haptens so so what are the examples of haptens 
examples are penicillin dinitrophenol amino benzene these are examples of heptans you know heptan it is derived from the greek word heptin and the meaning of heptin is to fasten heptin derived from greek word heptin that means to fasten so when heptin becomes tightly fastened to a carrier molecule then the heptin becomes immunogenic right okay so this is all about heptins now we'll see okay what are adjuvants adjuvants are the substances which increases the immuno response or immuno response of antigens adjuvants are the substances which increases immuno power of antigens but adjuvants they are non immunogenic alone okay are non immunogenic but they increases the immuno power of antigens am i clear so let's say antigens and here we are talking about the immuno power so antigens they may have low immunogenicity or low immuno power or some antigens have high immunogenicity so here those antigens have low immunogenicity that means low immuno power that antigen is conjugated with an adjuvant then what will happen immuno power will increases so it will increase immunogenicity so what is the function of adjuvant adjuvant they are non immunogenic compounds non immunogenic compounds but they have the power to increase the immunogenicity of antigens you know adjuvant it is an ingredient which is used in some vaccines okay why it is used in vaccines it is used in vaccine to create a stronger immuno response in people okay adjuvants are used in some vaccines to generate stronger immuno response okay or you can say that adjuvants helps vaccine work better okay some vaccines that are made from weakened or killed germs that contain naturally occurring adjuvants and help the body to produce stronger immuno response okay but most vaccines which are developed developed today that include just the small compo components of germs okay you know the vaccines that contain the weakened or killed germs but the vaccines which are developing nowadays that contains only the small components of germs components of germs like uh, their proteins okay rather than the entire bacteria or virus so in that case adjuvants in that case what in that case adjuvants help to produce an immuno response strong enough to pro to protect the person from the disease okay strong immuno response so what are the examples of adjuvants aluminum salts like aluminum hydroxide aluminum phosphate potassium sulfate okay which is known as alum these are examples of adjuvants hope you like this video and i am able to clear your concept about heptan and adjuvant so this is all about today's session see you in next session till then keep learning and don't forget to subscribe my channel